Hi guys, this is gsnown.com and I'm here with the Asus Zenfone 2 Deluxe Special Edition for a full review. We're dealing with a bit of a fashion phone and a handset that has some ultra high-end specs in the mix. So it debuted at the end of January this year and it's priced at around $399 in the 128GB version. As I said before, it's an ultra high-end device that even reaches up to 256GB in storage. This is the version ZE551ML we're testing with 128GB of storage. Now, design-wise, obviously, this is a special model. We didn't call it Fashion Phone for nothing. So, uh, this uh, back cover you can see here is called Drift Silver. It's inspired by crystals and supercars, has a very nice 3D effect. And from what I understood, it has over 500 polygons for a very unique look. There's an extra case you saw in the unboxing, it's called Carbon Knight and it's inspired by the carbon fiber of the supercars and race cars. This handset weighs 170 grams and measures 10.9 millimeters in thickness which makes it the same size as the Asus Zenfone 2 and Zenfone 2 Laser. This means we're dealing with quite a big phablet, not very easy to use with a single hand, but those with big hands will handle it. It has good grip, it's quite comfy and the facade is typical Zenfone while the back is certainly unique and good looking. Of course this is a subjective matter, some people may not like this approach. It's a heavy and massive phone but still certainly unique and as usual for a Zenfone the back cover is very very hard to remove. Now time to talk about the hardware. So up front this one is a 5.5 inch Full HD screen with an IPS LCD panel in the mix and Gorilla Glass 3 protection and other things we're mentioning here is that we get big bezels for this display and there's no video player so we're going to have to resort to the good old gallery. This is our usual test file and let's check out the experience. So first things first we have a quite weak contrast, mid-level brightness, vivid colors and wide view angles. Other than that, we're dealing with RGB stripe pixels, which you can see here under the microscope. And then we did the lux meter test and achieved 388 lux units, which is okay, but not hugely impressive. At least we beat the Sony Xperia Z5 Premium and we're at the exact same value as the Asus Zenfone Zoom. Of course, we can calibrate the display to our needs in the settings area. Here we go, display, brightness level, font style, font size, sleep and of course screen color mode with color temperature, blue light filter, vivid and custom with two extra sliders. So overall a good screen, an okay screen but nothing out of the ordinary. Now if you want to talk about other hardware, we got here the Intel Atom Z3590 processor. It's a quad core CPU clocked up to 2.5 GHz and the GPU it's the PowerVR G6430. Keep in mind that the Asus Zenfone 2 had the Z3580 processor, so this is a superior Intel Atom version. Obviously the phone has no lag, has an okay functioning, the games run perfectly and since I mentioned games, keep in mind we're getting Asphalt 8 pre-installed with 24,000 extra coins. The phone also brings 4 GB of LPDDR3 RAM, 128 or double that amount of storage and a micro SD card slot also with support for up to 128 GB of storage. So we're running Asphalt 8 to show you how gaming is handled here. And just in case you were wondering, we did do some benchmarks and uh, we're pretty close to the Snapdragon 808 handsets. We're not at the level of the Snapdragon 810 models, but we found out that in 3D Mark we did quite fine and we're only a couple of hundred points below the Galaxy S6 and S6 Edge, which is quite a feat. In Antutu 6 we did score quite low compared to the Huawei Mate 8, so that's a bummer. I would place this model somewhere between the HTC One A9 and the Sony Xperia Z5 benchmark wise. So here we are with Asphalt 8 and it's bundled coins, 24,000 coins to buy you a fresh car once you buy the phone, the special edition Zenfone. Here we go, ready to race. Putting the car in gear and everything looks fine, nice lighting effects, 
Nevada never looks so beautiful. Nice speed sensation and those very nice screen cracking effects when getting wrecked. Of course you can also drift if need be. Anyway, you get the gist of it, this is Asphalt 8 in action and all the games run ok, including FIFA, Dead Trigger and whatever you may want to play here. However, one aspect I must mention is that after playing uh, the game Riptide GP2 for 15 minutes we achieved a temperature of 40.1 degrees Celsius, which means there's a tendency to increase the temperature, I wouldn't call it overheating, but it's pretty close to that level. Now it's time to talk about the acoustics and we're dealing here with this back speaker right here and uh, we have back volume buttons by the way just in case you were wondering and the good old audio wizard app is right here to tweak the experience so we got smart mode music mode movie mode recording mode gaming mode and speech mode all available here then we get to the music app typical zen ui affair and the options are included here we have a sleep timer we got settings we got the stock equalizer but now let's actually listen to some tunes So as you just saw, there is no muffling on a flat surface, which is always a good thing. We got a loud and clear sound, good bass, nice percussion and good voice in the songs that involve voice. I won't show you the headphones because you've seen them in the unboxing and they're the exact same pair we got with the Zenfone 2, Zenfone 2 Laser and Zenfone Zooms, so all the Zenfones from the past year, which means they're still loud, comfy, clear sound and good isolation, that's what we associate with them. We got FM radio and we use the decibel meter to measure the power of the volume and we got up to 86.2 decibels at the back, quite impressive because we beat the Galaxy Note 4 and Galaxy S6 Edge Plus which is no small feat. Now it's time to talk about the camera. At the back 30 megapixel shooter, dual tone flash, f2.0 aperture, Toshiba sensor, at the front 5 megapixel shooter, f2.0 aperture 85 degree angle and as you can see the camera app doesn't start very fast but uh, we get a ton of options to capture stuff so we got auto manual hdr beautification super resolution depth of field low light and night panorama miniature and more we can jump straight to manual with its own customizations like white balance exposure iso shutter and uh, autofocus other than that, the regular usage experience, well, pretty fluid zoom. I would say that the focus is fast, even though we don't have laser focus. But the photo capture is a bit on the slow side, I have to mention that. Okay, so in spite of all those, it's now time to go to the gallery and see how the camera really does during the day and even during the night. So we're going to start off with the daytime capture. And I have to say that in the shade, the colors look quite okay, but in the sun, there appears to be a bit of oversaturation. And when we did the capture grass, the grass was too green for its own good. It looked artificial, as you can see in this panorama. That, by the way, is quite good, quite clear, but that grass thing was a bit of a letdown. Excellent close-ups, that I have to mention. They look excellent, all the details are perfect, but not so good landscape shots because you start to see the missing details when you zoom in. And some very nice close-ups of flowers, obviously. And many shots that were burned by the sun, the early April sun. We attempted some selfies that are also affected by the strong sun. And the face texture looked a bit on the artificial side while the background was rather blurred. Don't get me wrong, this is a strong camera, just look at those close-ups, but when it comes to details and not getting sunburned, I've seen much better. The HDR tends to burn the images even more, and I would call the level of detail as mid-range. If you zoom in, you lose quite a bit of quality, but generally the clarity was good. 
So, in spite of all that, I would place the quality of the captures above the ASUS Zenfone 2 and overall very close to the ASUS Zenfone 2 laser, too bad for the color calibration. It's basically the same as the ASUS Zenfone 2 laser, but a bit more burnt and handling landscape shots with less details maybe. Also good textures and excellent close-ups. Now during the night, and I'm talking about low light capture, let's see what happened. So these light halos were quite big, quite extended, the colors were pretty much ok, brightness was so-so, a bit of blur happening here and there, but when the flash is on and we're taking a close-up, things look quite fine. As you can see this shot is blurred, this one isn't, you have to be patient and of course a laser focus would have been pure gold here, but in the end activating night mode and the low light mode should handle everything. Now when it comes to the video capture, we're shooting MP4, Full HD, 30 frames per second, 22 mega per second bitrate. Quite good microphones, but the image is severely burnt, quite shaky, and there's focus loss in the distance. Oversaturation is happening here, and the quality is not exactly my definition of Full HD. And during the night time, low light capture, there were some stripes above the image which I frankly didn't like. I've seen many phones that are uh, uh, two times cheaper than this phone and take better video capture, so that's not a good thing to notice. Now, when it comes to the browser, you can either play with uh, the pre-installed one or play with Chrome. I'm playing with the pre-installed one that includes a trending section, that includes a speed dial and it's quite fast and uh, I have to say that the browser results, browser benchmarks are quite modest. We got this virtual keyboard, comfy, including swipe and with a numeric row, so when it comes to input it's ok and once again the browser is quite fast. Now on the connectivity side of things, we're dealing with LTE category 4, which means we're getting up to 250 mega per second download speeds, there's Wi-Fi A, B, G and AC, Bluetooth 4.0, dual micro SIM slots, micro USB with OTG, GPS and GLONASS, and when doing a speed test we got 27 mega per second in uh, download and 23 mega per second in upload and you can see the speed test right here. So in the dialer area we also get speed dial, smart dial and the calls have an ok signal, good call quality and they're quite loud. Now as far as the battery is concerned, back to the gallery. So on board of this phone there is a 3000 mAh lithium polymer unit with Boostmaster technology that juices up the phone to 60% in 39 minutes. Also with a 10 minute charge we get 4 hours of 2G talk time. And in our test of continuous HD video playback, we got 9 hours, which is quite good. We beat the Huawei Honor 6, LG G4 and Lenovo Fab Plus, so we're doing fine. Not fine is the PCMark test, which is uh, 5 hours and 36 minutes. It's a bit underwhelming, it's between ASUS Zenfone 2 and the ASUS Zenfone Zoom and below the LG AKA, which is an entry-level phone, so certainly not a compliment. The charging requires 1 hour and 55 minutes and anything below 2 hours is considered ok. Power management includes power saving options and there's 5 of them, performance normal, power saving, super saving and customized and all of them have to do with CPU, brightness, network and extended standby as well as the behavior of various apps. You can tap some of these options and tweak the way they use and access the CPU, brightness, etc. So overall the battery is a mixed bag, both good and bad in some aspects. Now as far as the software goes, options is the keyword here, a ton of options, we're overwhelmed by options. We're running Android 5.0 Lollipop with Zen UI on top and a ton of custom icons. This time this is not the regular Zen UI, we have these red and black icons that are supposed to be a racing stripe team or sort of things like that and instead of the app drawer icon we have a racing flag which you can see right here. Honestly I don't like this interface but it's a question of preferences and in the end we have the themes here, you can change it if you don't like it, we have a ton of them and some of them are actually very very nice like this one here for example. Other than that multitasking via carousel, screen pinning also included and a ton of ways to tweak the experience. We got apps, widgets, home edit, wallpapers, icon packs, themes, lock apps, preferences, 
you can get lost in all these options and customize your device so nobody will recognize it afterwards. Edit pages, icon size, alignment, effects, icon label, fonts and more and more. Other than that, we have a quick glance at the drop down area, includes notifications and these quick settings that are actually sexier now compared to the old bubbles on Zen UI. The extra settings include Zen Motion with its typical gestures and they include a one hand mode and then we have Do Not Disturb, Asus Cover, there's Easy Mode, Kids Mode and Security Features. As far as the pre-installed apps go, it's a Zen phone so as usual we're dealing with bloatware. I counted the apps, there's 73 pre-installed apps, this has got to be a record and among them some of the let's say useful ones, we got Do It Later. Um, let's see, we got mini movie, party link, PC link, photo collage, quick memo, and probably the most useful though, uh, the most useful app of them all is Super Note that actually feels like a pretty solid Samsung Galaxy S Note replacement, let's say that. But in the end, 73 apps is huge, even though we have a lot of storage. Time for the verdict, so let's start with the pros. This is an ultra high-end phone in some aspects, like storage, for example, and the RAM has an original design. It takes great close-ups with the camera and has an extra bundled cover. Also on the pro side we got ok performance and a reasonable display let's say, at least when it comes to regular usage and things like that. Acoustics I would call them pretty good, the volume is actually good and um, the video playback time of the battery was also nice and lots of customization options for the user interface which you won't see on other Android phones. Those were the pros. Now on the con side, the temperature gets a bit high during gaming, as I mentioned before. It's quite a massive tablet and a bit heavy. We got oversaturated and burnt pics during uh, very sunny days. The videos were totally underwhelming, video capture here. PC mark result could have been better. And the Android 5.0 feels old right now plus we got the bloatware, 73 apps is huge in 2016. So overall this phone is a niche phone, only meant for some people, basically gamers. They want to have a cool phone, they want a ton of storage for their, game, their games, they want 4GB uh, of RAM, a powerful Intel processor, so everything is checked, only this feels like a tuned car with a big engine and a small tank with a great spoiler and kit, but poor maneuverability, so while some of the aspects are ultra-tuned, others are a bit left aside, like the continuous battery usage, like the video capture, and uh, let's say maybe the screen in some regards. In the end, it's still a great gaming tool, and keep an eye on the price, because once it drops, even $50, the phone becomes very, very interesting. This is jsnon.com, and this is the Asus Zenfone 2 Deluxe Special Edition. Bye-bye.